As you wrap up your interviews and get ready to think about your rank order list, there are multiple factors to consider. So today we'll talk about 15 such factors and then we'll also share a very simple Excel-based tool that you can use to think through and make your own rank order list. Welcome to our channel where we give you guidance on all aspects of USMLE. So if it's your first time here, consider subscribing to us on our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. So today we are going to talk about rank order list. We'll discuss 15 factors that can help you create, customize and personalize your own rank order list. And after that, we're going to talk about a very simple Excel based tool that will help you put everything in perspective, customized to you. Remember that not all of these factors may be relevant to you and importance of these factors may vary with each individual. Three things that I want to talk about even before we dig into those factors. First is understand what is important to you because that will drive the entire rank order list. And that's where your gut feel, your interaction with the program, the residents plays a big role. So have as much information about the program as possible once you sit down and think through your rank order list. And then there are these two mistakes that a lot of IMGs make that you should be aware of. First, always rank the programs in the order where you want to go. Don't worry too much about how your interview went or how you think the programs will rank you. Always think about where you want to go. Remember that the NRMP algorithm always favors the applicant. The second common mistake that the applicants make is they don't understand how the rank order list works. So the rank order list does not decide if you match or not. It only decides where you end up matching. So those are the things that I've wanted to first make sure you are aware of as we get into those factors. And of course, there are other videos that we have done on how programs rank the applicant and some of the other mistakes that applicants end up doing. So I'll have the links to those below as well. Okay, so let's start with those factors. Of course, if you are a Sarthi student, you will have access to our classes, interaction with the mentors, and you'll have a separate uh, website where you can create your own rank order list. So the first factor, as many of you would already know, is the university program versus the community programs. On the face of it, regardless of the specialty, most IMGs will rank university programs higher than the community programs. And, and there are obvious reasons for it. There is a research base in a university which is typically better reputed than a community program. Uh, there are more fellowship opportunities. The workload per resident may be lower the brand or the name of the university uh, comes into play. So all these are the factors uh, that need to be considered. But it's not that all community programs need to be ranked lower than the university program. So for example, Cook County is a very good example of a excellent and many students will rank Cook County say in internal medicine higher than many of the university program. So that's just one example. Sometimes the community programs can have smaller size and therefore the camaraderie among the residents is, is much higher. Everyone knows everyone else. So, uh, you know, the, the interpersonal relationships can be better in some of those community programs. Then of course, the big factor is ease of getting into fellowships. In general, the university programs may be easier just because of the training they provide, research opportunities they provide, uh, getting into fellowships may become easier. But community programs, on the other hand, will give you an excellent clinical training. So those who are looking to get into primary care or internist, hospitalist kind of jobs may be inclined to rank some of the community programs higher than the university. So those are some of the factors as you assess the university programs and the community programs. The second factor is the career path of the recent graduate. So it's related to the first one. And what you want to do is you want to look at those lists. You want to see how many have gone into primary care, how many recent graduates have gone into fellowship, and then assess what your goals are and how does that align 
with what you want to do. So career path of the recent graduates is number two. Number three is cost of living. Now, of course, if a program is uh, located in a very expensive city like uh, New York or LA, obviously the residents would be paid higher as opposed to a program in Flint, Michigan. So, so on the face of it, the cost of living is equalized. Still, you should do a rough uh, back of the envelope calculation and there are many uh, calculators out there that you can use to see and compare the cost of living. The fourth factor is in-house fellowship. So obviously if a program has in-house fellowship and you're a graduate from that program, your probability of getting into those fellowships increases. However, the catch here is, are these fellowship in the specialty that you want? Because if they are not in the specialty that you want, then this is not an important factor for you to consider. The fifth is the geographic location of the program. So most IMGs, if you are directly coming from out of US and you don't have any family, it may not be that important, but geography does play a very important role in certain situations. So for example, if you match into University of Hawaii and you're interested in fellowship, then what you will have to consider is, you know, flying to the mainland all the time for interviews, assuming the in-person interview starts. So the cost, the other factor related to geography comes in when you are looking for jobs or fellowship. Given the location, your attendings, your PIs, your research mentors uh, may have better connections, they may be very well known within that location. So for example, if you are in Chicago doing your residency, uh, you will have a lot of uh, opportunities in Chicago, given where your attendings would know people or for, for job related opportunities. So geography and location of the program can play a role even outside of your family consideration. The sixth is research opportunities. Now, whether you are interested in research or you're not interested in research, some programs will give you this option, this opportunity much more than other programs. And typically students, even if they want to go into primary care, appreciate the additional research options and opportunities. So something to consider as you think through your rank order. The seventh important one is the quality of faculty. Uh, very hard to assess just based on the interviews, but it does matter. Although some would argue that the quality of training uh, on paper remains the same, but in practice, as you know, it is not the same. So it's important to see the quality of faculty, look at uh, their reputation, look at their publications, look at how active they are and how their teaching styles are. So this is probably something that you would have realized as you have interacted with the residents during the interview. The eighth factor related to all this is the reputation of the program. Whether you are going to look for a job or you're going for fellowship, reputation really counts. The ninth factor is the infrastructure and facilities available. So during your interviews, you would have been given a virtual tour or they would have discussed some of those facilities. Some programs pride themselves on say simulation labs, sim labs, cath labs, things like that. So consider these because infrastructure plays a very important role during your training. The 10th is the size of the program and size matters. A smaller program may give you more opportunity to interact with other residents. Onlet community can be formed within the group of uh, residents. So that's one. But the flip side is if you have more number of residents, then the workload can be distributed. Patient cap per resident, that's an important criteria. And size by itself, the number of residents by itself may not be an important criteria. You always want to look at also the resident cap, six to eight or whatever that cap is because that will help you rank this factor accordingly. The 
11th is the social and recreational facilities in that area. Now, this is obviously more important if you have a family, small kids, may not be as important to you if you are by yourself. The 12th is the visa you want, obviously a very important factor. Many of you may know that uh, most programs offer J-1 visa and, and the H-1 visas, H-1B visas are becoming less and less every year. The advantage, if you will, of J-1 is that uh, if you're applying for fellowship, more and more fellowship opportunities open up on J-1 and fellowships on H-1B are very limited. However, if you are on H-1B, obviously you are not subject to a waiver job or home country return rule or things like that. So depending on, again, what you want to do, uh, H1 versus J1 is a very important factor for those of you who need visa. The next factor is the program support overall. It's slightly hard to quantify, but this entails, you know, resident welfare, how well they look after you. Do they consider you part of the family? It also relates to how much support they will give you if you are applying for fellowship. So all these things come under the program support for you as a resident. 14th is the cross institutional collaboration or support. So whether you are going to do electives, or otherwise research opportunities, many programs will have collaboration with other local programs. So University of Chicago, University of Illinois, Cook County, they all collaborate, the residents go for electives, they have a collaboration on research. So if such is the opportunity you get at one program, obviously worth considering because this can help you quite a bit in expanding your professional network in looking for fellowship opportunities or in general. Finally, an important factor that is generally overlooked is the diversity of the nationalities. US is the land of diverse culture. So you want to consider the diversity in the program. Having a diverse resident population gives you an opportunity to learn about different cultures, get some great leadership experience, teamwork experience, working with different nationalities. A very important factor, but mostly overlooked. So these were some of the top factors that we have seen work over the years for our students. Now let's head over and talk about the Excel-based tool that can help you create your own rank order list. So let's look at this Excel sheet. Now in column A, you will type in the factors. It can be any of factors that we discussed or you can delete some of these. You can add more, uh, whatever the number of factors is. So you can see in column A, there are these factors. Column B is where the personalization comes in. So each one of these factors, the importance for these factors will vary uh, with each student. So for you, for example, visa could be more important. Uh, maybe geography is not as important. So you have to personalize. Howsoever number of factors you have, the total weightage, the sum of all these weights for the factors has to be 100%. That's the concept of the weighted mean. And uh, this Excel sheet is based on, on weighted mean. Of course, if factor is not important to you, one particular factor. So for example, again, I'll pick visa. If you don't need visa, so that will be 0%. And that factor will not play any role in the overall scheme of things. And then for your own reference, you can comment on why you rank or weighted each factor the way you did. So in this case, you can see, you know, the university or many university affiliation would have been 10% for this student and so on. Competitive fellowship, they had three, then it would be 10%. If they had two of the fellowships, then the student would have given it 9% or so on. Now let's come to the individual program. So the first program here on our list is the Robert Packer Guthrie. What you need to be able to do is for all the factors that you've just identified, each individual program now has to have a score for these factors. 
the university versus uni university affiliated factor for Robert Packer Guthrie uh, gets a score of eight. And this one you have to score on a scale of one to 10, just to make it easier. And then of course, if you want to really consider why at eight, you can do this uh, reasoning for each one of the individual score. Now the thing here, of course, to consider and to remember is that the weights once assigned to a factor here in column B should not change. It is the individual program scores for that factor that of course can change. So once you have scored uh, the Guthrie program on all the factors, scale of one to 10, and then you calculate the, the weighted mean. And the weighted mean is, is fairly straightforward. For example, uh, this B5, 7% times D5, uh, and then you know you add this uh, B6 times D6. So some of all those uh, factors and the scores will give you a weighted score of 8.1 on a scale of 10 for Guthrie. And the formula looks complicated. It is not. It's a simple summation of uh, multiplication of the factors percentage times the score. So that's how you will complete all other uh, programs on your list. So St. Vincent, uh, Mercy, same idea on, you know, the scores will vary, but you will multiply it with the corresponding factor percentage to get a weighted score out of 10. So that's how uh, you do all the programs on your list. And that will give you the weighted score. Now, of course, you could see what the weighted score here is and do your own rank order list. But in, on the second tab, you can see the entry sequence. So Robert Packer was entered first. That's why it comes number one. Doesn't mean this is its ROL. And likewise, you see other programs on the list. What we recommend is not to copy paste. So for example, if you look at this Robert Packer Guthrie here, it points to the D1 in the enter ROL info tab, which is right here. So if you go to D1, you will see Robert Packer Guthrie. So you just make sure that the programs are, are just pointing to instead of copying. So I go here, say an equal to sign, and I'll pick Robert Guthrie. So you can see that way you don't have to copy paste and whatever change you make in that cell D1 or G1 uh, will appear here. So same idea for the score. You don't have to copy the score, just point your cell to the uh, where you are picking the score from. So here I'm pointing it to the D20. And then of course you sort based on the weighted score from uh, largest to smallest uh, to give you a rank order list. And therefore here St. Mary's come first and Sinai Grace two. And, and so on. So this is a very easy way to create your rank order list. So hopefully this was useful to you and will help you create your own rank order list. Feel free to share it with others who may find this video useful and good luck for your match.